guys, welcome back to another tutorial. My name's Jake, and today we're gonna be taking a look at this foggy forest effect and how we can utilize some AI tools to assist our composites inside of After Effects. So let's take a look at what we're gonna be creating. So pretty cool, lots of fun stuff to go over. First, we're gonna talk about setting up your footage to create an AI depth map. Next, we're gonna bring it into After Effects and composite it to look like fog. And lastly, we'll cover 3D tracking and how you can add stock effects to round out the scene using that same depth map to composite them. And if you stick around till the end, I'll show you some fun techniques on how I created that monster that shows up at the end of the short. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so here we are in Adobe After Effects. As you can see, I already have my footage imported. So I'm gonna drag it down here to this icon to create a new composition. This is the shot we're going to be working on for the tutorial where the monster yells behind him and he quickly spins around to see where it's coming from. Now, the first thing I know we're going to need to do is create our AI depth map. But before we can do that, we have to prepare our footage with a little bit of sharpening and some contrast since this was shot on my FX3 in log, which is why it's so flat. Now I'll also warn you in this tutorial, I am using a plugin called FX Console from Video Copilot, which allows me to quickly search through effects by hitting control space with my footage selected. So I can type in things like levels and hit enter to add them on as an effect. Now you don't have to use FX Console to follow along. You can find all the same effects in the effects dropdown at the top or by coming over here to the right where the effects and presets panel is and just searching in here. But if you don't have it installed or haven't ever tried it before, I definitely recommend you go grab it since it is free and it does speed up your workflow quite a bit. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and keep working. I'm gonna drag this over so we have a little more room on our levels effect. And I'm just gonna crunch down the brightness some, maybe bring this side in just a little bit. Now I'm also going to add another effect called Unsharp Mask. And let's just increase the amount a little and the radius as well. Now this should be good enough for us to generate our depth map. So a quick shortcut is hitting Control M on the keyboard to add this whole composition to the render queue. If you don't see the render queue, you can come up here to Window and make sure Render Queue is checked on down here at the bottom. Now I'm going to render this out as an H.264 MP4 file. Default settings are okay. But since I know the AI depth map is only 1080p at the most and this clip is 4K, I'm gonna go ahead and click Best Settings and change resolution from full to half to make it 1920 by 1080. Click OK. Now we can give it an output destination. I'm just gonna call this the shop name plus depth and then hit OK. And then we can go ahead and render this out. Now once that's done, it's time to generate our depth map. Runway has a really good tool called Extract Depth that you can use for free. I'll put a link to this in the description. Now I'll also put a link to this website, which is called huggingface.co, and they have their own depth map generator, which I think produced just a little bit more of a consistent result than Runway did. However, you can see for yourself by testing them and deciding which works for you. Now on huggingface.co, we can click here, navigate to that MP4 we rendered out and press open. Now next we need to go to the advanced settings turn the process length up all the way just to make sure it gets the full length of our clip, change the target FPS to the FPS of our footage, which here in After Effects, we can check by right clicking, going to composition settings, and then checking the frame rate of the comp, which is gonna be 23.976. So let's type in 23.976, and then let's change our resolution from 1280 all the way up to 1920. Now we can hit generate, and once that's done, you'll see this generated depth video, which is kind of funky looking as all the closer colors are more yellow and the further away colors dip towards purple and then eventually to black. So let's click this icon to download it. The default name of depth underscore viz is totally fine. So hit save. Now back in After Effects, we can go to the project panel, double click in here to import, or you can also go to file and choose import file. Grab your new depth underscore viz and click import. Now, if you did everything correctly, when you drag it down here into your original composition, you'll see that it matches the exact length and timing of the original clip. If your frame rate or the length of the footage was set wrong, you'll notice it right away as this won't stretch all the way to the end of the comp. 
Now also, since this is 1080 and our original footage is 4K, we have to scale this up 200%. So we can hit S on the keyboard and change the scale from 100 to 200. Now we need to go about making this look like fog. So in order to do that, I'm first going to add a tint effect to remove all of the color and then an invert effect to bring the light color to the back and the dark color to the front. Now I'm also going to throw on a levels adjustment so we can crunch this down some. And at this point in time, it would be good enough to set the mode to screen and it's already doing the trick of making the scene look foggy. However, it's also brightening it up with the screen blend mode. So we're actually gonna use a different method to apply this fog. So change it back from screen to normal and we're gonna add a couple more effects. The first is another free effect from Video Copilot called VC Color Vibrance, which we're gonna to use to unmolt this footage and give it an alpha channel. So if we change this matte alpha from off to only, we can then solo it. We can toggle the transparency to see that this now has an alpha channel and the white is the only thing that remains. Now, lastly, I'm going to add another tint effect and we can unsolo this so we can see both at the same time and then change the map white to something a little bit darker. And you can already see what this is doing. Realistically, the fog would be blocking out some light, so we don't want it to be perfectly white as it was when we set it to screen. And instead, we want it to be a little bit gray with the alpha channel in order to give us that realistic result. So I'm gonna make this just a little bit blue to match the snow and the environment. That looks pretty good, and we can press okay. And the cool part about this is we can now go back up to the levels effect and adjust this to show just how much fog we want in our scene. You can see as we darken this up, the fog pushes back through the trees. And as we bring it back to the left, the fog covers more of our scene. And if we drag from the right, you can see we're making it more or less opaque depending upon where we want this fog to be for what kind of a shot we're trying to achieve. I think for my sake, something like this looks pretty good. Now we can go ahead and start talking about bringing in some of these smoky fog elements to further round out this effect. One of my favorite places to grab stuff online is from a website called Production Crate. I'll throw a link to them in the description below since this is the website I find myself using most often. But another good one to search through is Action VFX, uh, but there's tons of these out there. Motion Ray has some, I'm sure Adobe Stock has some as well, so it's really dealer's choice when it comes to picking stock assets. But for this tutorial, I am gonna be grabbing one of these fog burst sideways from Production Crate, as well as one of these ground emissions and bringing it back into After Effects. These are the two that I'm going to be working with. This one here, fog burst sideways 11, and then this one here, ground emission atmosphere fast one. But before we can add any of these, we first have to 3D track our footage. So let's first hide our depth map, select our footage and duplicate it, and then we're gonna pre-compose the duplicate version by hitting Control shift c on the keyboard. Make sure you click Move All Attributes, and I'm gonna call this Tracking Comp. If you double-click, you can go into this composition, and here we wanna to go to the effects controls and add just a little bit more contrast, sharpen this up just a little bit more, and then we need to create a garbage mat to cover up our actor because we don't want his movement to be taken into account while it's tracking the scene. So hit Control Y on the keyboard to create a new solid. I'm gonna just call this Matte. Then we can hide the mat for now. Come up here to the top and grab your Mask Pen tool and with your mat selected, draw just a rough box around the outside of your guy. Now hit M on the keyboard to bring up the mask path and create a keyframe so we can go through adjusting this mask to make sure it covers him fully the entire time. So I'll go back to the beginning of the shot, move this a little bit, Maybe we'll go to the end, slide this over, make sure it covers both his legs. Let's start jumping in between keyframes that we've made and adjusting this a little bit at a time. And when we're done, we can turn back on our mat and scrub through this one more time just to make sure we did our job right and he doesn't ever poke out somewhere. That looks pretty good to me. So let's go ahead and jump back into our composition. And with our tracking comp selected, we're going to add the 3D camera tracker. Now this is gonna take just a minute or two to go through and analyze. So while it's happening, I'm gonna play a quick game of chess. The idea here is to build a strong center. So I'm gonna close off these pawns. Ooh, I can't take this pawn with my queen because then otherwise the bishop can check and do a discovered attack on my queen and I'll probably lose. So let's find a better move. Um... All right, now back in After Effects, the 3D camera tracker is finished and you can see as we hover over the footage with our 3D camera tracker effect selected, we can see different planes. 
So let's just try and grab one that looks like it's roughly aligned with the floor. Right click and choose Create Solid and Camera. Now if we scale up this solid, we can now go ahead and scrub through our footage just to make sure the track is sticking decently. And I think it did a pretty good job. So let's hide our solid. Let's also hide our tracking comp. And then we can come to the project panel and import one of our stock assets. I'm gonna solve this fog to make it a little easier to work with. And I'm just gonna drag it over some, maybe about here. And then I'm gonna grab my rectangular mask tool and just draw a mask around the left side to cut off that singular point where it's emitting from. Hit F and then let's increase the feather to soften out that edge. Now I'm gonna go ahead and toggle the switches, make this 3D, and then I wanna place this on the ground right about where our track solid was. A quick way to do this is to parent this while holding shift to make this layer jump to the same position that the track solid is in. Now we can undo the parent after that's done, select our footage, and let's rotate it back into the orientation we want it to be in. Now we can go ahead and scale this up, hitting S on the keyboard and just dragging this up. Let's move it a little higher in our comp. And now we're ready to use our depth map to further integrate this into our scene. So let's select our depth map. Let's hit Control D to duplicate it. Bring this one to the top and let's turn it back on so we can see it. Now for this copy of the depth map, I don't want any alpha channel. So let's go to the effects controls, delete color vibrance, as well as the second tint effect and then we can turn it back off again. Now next, let's toggle the switches back to reveal the track mat. And now let's use the pick whip on our stock layer to select the new depth map we've created. Now by default, the track mat is using the alpha of the layer we picked, but instead I wanna click it one time to change it to a luma mat in order to utilize the brightness of this depth layer. Now if we drag this around, you can see our guy, we can see some trees, and even better, now we can select our depth map and adjust the levels effect to push this further back behind some trees. And we can drag this around a little bit just to see how this is working. I know I'm gonna want one here. Let's hit Control D to duplicate it and maybe bring one over here, slide it on the timeline so the two smoke copies aren't the exact same as one another. And we can also make different copies of the depth map to place different elements at different depths in the scene. So let's duplicate the depth map one more time grab one of our fog layers and duplicate that as well, and then use the pick whip to select the new depth map we just created. And then on that new depth map, we can adjust the levels to bring that fog layer forward. And let's slide this one on the timeline as well and maybe bring it here into the center of the frame. Now this is already looking really cool, but I think we definitely want a little bit more, especially towards the end of the comp when the smoke starts fading out. So I'm gonna grab this bottom fog Hold shift and select the top one to grab all three. Hit control D to duplicate them all. And then let's slide them all back in the composition. Now hit T on the keyboard to reveal the opacity of them all. And let's bring this down to about 50%. Now next we can come into the project panel and let's drag in our ground atmosphere. Now just as before, toggle the switches, make this one 3D, hold shift and use the parent pick whip to select one of our fog layers to bring it to the same location in 3D and then undo that parent. And we can place this on the ground, maybe scale it up a bit as well. Now, if we unsolo everything and turn our original fog layer back on, now this is already looking pretty cool, except these fog layers are just a little bit too bright. So I'm gonna grab our original depth, go to the effects controls, select our second tint, the one that we made kind of a dark grayish blue and copy that effect with control C. Now we can select all of our fog layers as well as our ground emission and hit control V to paste that tint effect onto all of them. Now I think I want just a little bit more fog covering our guy, so let's grab one of these fog layers, duplicate it, toggle the switches to reveal the mat, and let's turn it off so that way it's not being occluded by anything in the background. Let's drag it here in front of our actor and let's add a curves adjustment to this. On the curves adjustment, let's go from RGB to alpha and let's start dragging this up to make it more opaque. And you can see how that's now starting to occlude his legs here. Now, one of the last things I wanna do is soften out the edge of this tree since the depth map created a really harsh edge when we crunched it with levels. So in order to do that, I'm going to add a camera lens blur that's only affecting the right side of this frame. So let's create a new adjustment layer on top and add the camera lens blur effect to it. Set the blur radius to something high, like maybe 60. 
and then we're gonna use this blur map section in order to isolate just the right side of the frame. But before we can do that, we need something to stick in this layer slot. So let's create a new solid, control Y on the keyboard, click okay. I'm gonna hit enter on the keyboard and rename this to blur map. And now to this blur map, let's add the gradient ramp effect. Now I'm gonna grab the end ramp color and bring it over here to the right. And now I'm gonna grab the start ramp color and bring it over here to the right as well. Now we can turn off the visibility of this map, go to our adjustment layer that has the camera lens blur and select that blur map for the layer under the blur map dropdown. Now right away, you're not gonna see any effect from this because we need to change it from source to effects and masks in order to honor that gradient ramp that we added earlier. Now, if we select our blur map and select our gradient ramp, you can see by dragging this out that we can control where the blur is isolated to. So let's go to the beginning of our shot, drag this out some, set a keyframe for the start ramp color, and now let's go to the end of our shot when the tree is gone and drag this all the way to the right. Now, where we have this at the moment, it's already pretty good. However, for the original, I did go a bit crazy with the smoke and fog, so definitely feel free to play around and add in as much or as little as you deem necessary for your shot, but this is where we're gonna leave it for the tutorial. Now, next what I wanna do is click the top layer, scroll to the bottom and hold Shift to select every layer in this composition, and then hit Control shift c to pre-compose them. And I'm just gonna call this Composite. Now here on this layer we just created is where we can add any of our finishing sweeteners like camera shake, maybe some digital zooms. Uh, one thing I did do on the original example is add a bit of distortion using the heat distortion plugin from Video Copilot, which is a paid effect uh, in order to make it look like this whole thing was maybe a bit windy. But to round out the tutorial, I think what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of color grading. So select your composite layer and let's add the Lumetri color effect toggle down basic correction. And let's go ahead and add a little bit more contrast. Let's decrease the highlights some, crush the blacks just a little bit. What I wanna know more than anything is uh, how long this plane is going to be doing circles above my house. Uh, I think they know I'm recording a tutorial and uh, they're just playing a little prank on me. So uh, kudos to the pilot, you got me. We can go to the Creative tab, and here we can put in any one of these LUTs. There's lots of really cool presets, or you can go find one online that suits you. This SL Blue Cold looks pretty cool. Let's make the shadow tint a little bit blue, and maybe come up here to the temperature and offset that with a little bit more warmth. And maybe just for good measure, we can throw on a vignette, and also a little bit of noise right on top. Maybe set this to like 2%. Now this is about where we can call this for the sake of the tutorial. I think it's looking pretty cool if we uh, toggle off the composite and look at the before and after. We were definitely able to achieve some really fun results utilizing that AI depth map. And my favorite part about this is we never even had to rotoscope our actor, which as most of you know, is definitely a big pain. The results with the AI depth map aren't exactly perfect, but these tools are getting better and better every single month that they exist. So these types of workflows are definitely gonna become more prominent as time goes on. But before we call this one finished, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about that monster like I mentioned at the beginning. This is the full view of the weird tree looking Slender Man guy. And this was actually generated using a mid journey prompt inside of Discord. And once this was created and I was happy with the result, I brought it over to a website called hailuoai.video. Hey, hey, I don't know how to say that, but I'm gonna put this link in the description as well in case you wanna check it out. There is a free trial, which gives you a bunch of credits to generate some image to video sequences, which is what I used to make the monster stand up. I don't know why he's shrugging his shoulders at me, but uh, this is the result it gave me when I typed in, make this guy stand up. So I was able to just download that bring it into After Effects, and utilizing the key light effect, I was able to chop him out, and then composite him into my scene the exact same way we did with the other stock footage. First, by making him a 3D layer, placing him where he goes in the scene, and adding a bit of color correction to blend him in so we can just barely see him in the background. And that's about all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you picked up a trick or two. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment or hit me up over on Instagram or X at Jacob Dalton VFX. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.